Hi, my name is Derek Lopisco. I'm with the Society for Biological Engineering, and uh, today we have Professor Michael Dean. He is with uh, Rice University, where he is a professor of bioengineering, physics, and astronomy. Welcome. Well, thank you for having me. So uh, today, you actually just gave your uh, lecture on F equals MA of biology. Um, would you like to describe, maybe, for the people who have missed the lecture, uh, a little bit about the talk? Sure, it was a little bit of play on words. I've been involved in a DARPA project to find fundamental mathematical laws in biology for the past six or so years. <clears throat> and some of these laws we can express in terms of principles of least action. Mm -hmm. So we really did find mathematical analogs of Newton's laws for aspects of biology. One of the ones we focused a lot upon was how does structure grow in biology? So how does biology emerge out of organic chemistry? What are the features of biology that make it distinct from organic chemistry, what was the big bang of life. Mm -hmm. So uh, environmental change and uh, ruggedness of landscape and information flow are the three characteristics that lead to the growth of modularity in biology. Mm -hmm. and, and you mentioned uh, that there was a formula that was likened to F equals MA. Can you explain that? I, I believe I remember seeing a first derivative. And right, so, so if I have to write down a formula, I would say PE yeah. equals M prime over R. Okay. So M prime is the rate of growth of modularity, PE is the environmental pressure, and R tells us something about the ruggedness of the landscape. Okay. So this equation allows us to understand data that span from protein-protein interactions to metabolic networks in bacteria to physiology in humans to social networks. So when you say ruggedness of landscape, can you clarify a little bit about what, what that means as far as the, the biology? So the idea is, <clears throat> let's say we have a virus and the virus is evolving. If it only needs to make a few small changes, say a few permutations, and it achieves the fitness increase that's necessary for its survival, then that's a smooth fitness landscape. Okay. But if the virus needs to, say, recombine with other viruses, it needs to do horizontal gene transfer, if it needs to make these more dramatic, large-scale genetic moves, in order to increase its fitness landscape sufficiently to survive, then that's an indication of ruggedness. Okay. So, I mean, I mean so it seems like there's a lot of, of math um, and a lot of biology. Would you say your research is focused more on one or the other, or is it, is it a combination of the two? All right, so I'm a theorist. Um, this DARPA project was a combination of mathematicians and biologists. Sure. So it was an effort where mathematicians were interested in understanding more about the biology, and a few biologists were interested in, well, what do these mathematicians have to say that you know, can teach us more about deep aspects of biology? Okay. So are there projects that you're working on now that would uh, be in the same vein, or, or are you kind of moving away from, from uh, the research that you're doing now? So one of the things I'm interested in now is personalized critical care. I have a project with Tim Buckman, who's a really known, well-known critical care surgeon at Emory University. And the idea there is can we make better use of the data that's collected on people, say, as they come in on the ambulances or on the helicopters, can we use that to make predictions about what interventions would be best for that particular person? Oh, very interesting. So are you uh, excited about any sessions uh, in Minneapolis this, uh, this week? Well, this is a great opportunity. So you know, one of the things that maybe distinguishes biology from the other sciences is in the past, it's been difficult to be quantitative about mm -hmm. it. And you know, as we get better at engineering biology, I think this is really going to grow the technology of biology for uh, for the country, and this is something that chemical engineers are contributing to. Great. Well, Professor Deem, it's been a pleasure, and I really thank you for sharing your research today. Well, thank you for having me. Good luck to the society. Thank you.